All right, folks, here we go. Continuing with the notes for chapter eight, concluding uh, sections E, F, and G, uh, and discussing those core elements. Before we go into E, let's review A through D. A, standing for audience. Understand your audience. Know your audience. Uh, what is it that your audience expects? B is for backstory. What happened in the moments immediately before the beginning of the script? How does that impact your character? How does that impact the way that you deliver a script? C is for character. Understand your character. Be able to explain your character in as much detail as you possibly can. D is for desires. What's the underlying purpose of your character? What is it that your character wants to see at the end of it all? What's the uh, subtext of what's going on in the lines that you are reading for that character? Now, let's continue with E, core element number five. E is for energy. And energy can be talked about in three distinct levels. There's psychological energy, there's physical energy, and there's emotional energy. Let's unpack each one of these. First off, psychological energy. The thought you hold in your head can directly affect the way the words come out of your mouth. A good example of this is sarcasm. Uh, you can deliver a very straight line and sound like you're very genuine in what you're saying, but the words don't match the genuineness of what it is that you're saying. That's one of many ways in which uh, the, the way that we think can impact the actual delivery of the lines that we speak. Uh, it doesn't just work with sarcasm. It also works with fear. It works with jealousy. It works with trying to contain a certain amount of giddiness. All these things are ways that the words can kind of lead into an underlying expression of emotion or feeling or thought. The result is that the perceived meaning of the words winds up being different because we can tell that distinction in the way that we deliver those lines. Psychological energy is simply another way to understand subtext. Again, the underlying personality, the unspoken thoughts that define a character's behavior, it reveals what they really believe. So the way that we deliver those lines gives a clue as to the meaning of what's being said beyond just the words. The trick to using psychological energy properly is to keep the true belief just under the surface and not to really reveal it during the performance except through subtle intonation and behavior. So, uh, it's kind of a joke uh, between men and women uh, that uh, if if one says to the other something, uh, maybe maybe in the case of uh, whether one partner says to the other, "Hey, is it okay if I go out with my friends tonight?" and the other partner says, oh, "Yeah, that's fine," and the hesitation in the voice if you're paying attention, would you lead you to believe that maybe it's not fine that you go out, um, that, that something's happening, that there, there's something else that's not being said that needs to be expressed a little bit more. Um, so the subtleness of the way that we express our different words is going to help to be able to release that psychological energy. By keeping the true belief hidden behind the words, it allows for other characters to respond more appropriately. It also keeps the audience curious. In the example I just gave, you know, where the partner responded to the request to go out, well, yeah, that's fine. It makes the audience wonder, okay, well, why is sh that person not comfortable with the partner going out? What, was there another engagement? Uh, is there something happening where uh, they would just prefer the partner stay home? What's going on? It helps to create the drama in a script. Now, 
In addition to psychological energy, there's physical energy. Facial expressions, body language, physical movement, gestures, they're all part of the way that we communicate when speaking to others. Now, again, these are things that our audience is not going to see if we're talking about just lending our voice to something, but it helps us as voice actors to be able to get that proper emotion out in the way that it needs to. Physical energy gives power to the thoughts and the emotions that lay just under the surface of the words that you speak. Um, I've shared with you that when I record these lectures, you don't see my face, you don't see my movement, but I am moving my hands constantly as I'm talking with you in order to help me to be able to convey things in such a way through my voice that helps you to understand some of the nuances and subtleties uh, and some of the things that I think are important as I'm sharing these notes with you. So by my using my body to help me to express things as I talk, hopefully I'm conveying those different things that is going to capture your attention as I give voice to them. A mistake that many voice actors make is that they will stand perfectly still, uh, perfectly still, I should say, when they are in front of a microphone. They'll just stand there stiff as a board or they'll sit there and have no movement at all. Their performance will wind up being flat as a result. It'll be uninteresting with a monotone sort of delivery because when you're holding yourself still, you're not allowing your body to help you to be able to convey certain types of emotions. And you might be able to do it to a certain extent, but you're not going to be able to do it fully because the physical exertion that you create when you move your body helps to create the fullness of the things that we are giving speech to. And it's important for us to be able to do that because, again, the voice is the only clue that the listener has. And if we're not giving full voice to something, the audience loses a little bit of meaning. So, psychological energy, physical energy, and emotional energy. Where psychological energy deals with the thoughts behind the words, emotional energy is the expression through physical movement of the feelings and emotions that underscore those various thoughts. The most appropriate emotion will be determined by looking at the overall context of the story. So uh, as we are going through a script, we are looking at those different feelings. Uh, it kind of ties into the psychological in, in a certain aspect, but we're seeing and hearing more of it come out. And it's a little more blatant to the listener. You know, when you're crying, you're going to hear the crying. When you're angry, you're going to hear a certain amount of anger. It's not something that we're trying to hide. It's not something that um, is a more longer term extension of ourselves. Emotion tends to be fleeting and tends to change from time to time, where the psychological is something that we kind of carry with us long term. So uh, there is that sort of difference there, but the ways that they come out are still very important to us. The best way to use emotional energy is to keep the emotions just under the surface. Again, you want these things to be, uh, you want them to be expressed, but you don't necessarily want to go over the top unless your character calls for that. Uh, you know, if you're doing kind of an eccentric sort of personality, it would be okay. But for the most part, if you go over the top, it could destroy the, any chance you have at believability for your character. Uh, you want to sound like someone that would normally be happy or would normally be sad or would normally be fearful and not overplay that in order to uh, prevent the message that is trying to be portrayed to be overshadowed by the expression of the emotion itself. Allow yourself to recall how you felt emotionally in a similar situation to your character. Then base your performance from that feeling and from the tension in your body. 
then your emotional response will have truth and honesty. We've talked about this idea before too. You do want to be careful with this, especially if you are one that tends to be uh, overly emotional and influenced by emotion, especially if you would identify yourself as an empath. Um, so you, you do want to be careful in how you use this, but if you can safely do so, it's a great way for you to be able to connect with your character and to be able to convey the actual emotion that the character needs to portray and to make it sound more authentic. Now, the essence of how the three levels of energy affect your performance can be summed up this way. First off, change your thoughts. It'll change the way you move which will change the sound of the words that you're, that you're speaking. Your uh, body language will help you to be able to convey those thoughts in a much more profound way. Change your physical movement. It'll change the way you feel, which will affect the sound of the words you speak. And finally, change your emotions. It'll change the way you sound. So we talk about these things as three distinct sort of sources, psychological energy, physical energy, and emotional energy. But really, they all kind of interact with each other. And we're using all three at the same time in order for us to be able to give voice to the words that we're speaking. Um, it's not something that we necessarily compartmentalize as we're doing so, but we're integrating all those things at the same time as we're giving our voice performance. Now, let's continue on. This is core element number six. Forget who you are and focus. So forget and focus. A key principle of acting is to get out of your own way so the character or role that you're playing can emerge and can appear real to your audience. In other words, it's not about you. <laughs> It's about your character. If there's any part of the real you that is apparent in a performance, it is you doing the character as opposed to the character being authentic. So where we've talked about the idea of you becoming the character, the character becoming you, becoming is more of a state of being where when we talk about doing, it's more of a mimicking, a more of a, uh, like a facsimile if you will, uh, what we're trying to create is more of an authenticity. And to create that authenticity, we need to go more into the being aspect as opposed to the doing aspect. So the way to kind of do this is to do a lot of listening. Listen to your director. Listen to your instincts. Listen to your character's unspoken words. Listen to other actors and what they're saying and what they're doing. Listen to everything that's going on around you and make sure that your performance accurately reflects what would be the realistic expectation of, of reaction and interaction within the scope of everything that's going on. Again, it's part of your role of fulfilling the vision of the particular script that you have in front of you. It's not about you. They're not coming to, to listen to you specifically. They're coming to listen to your character. They're coming to listen to the overall message. And unless that character is you yourself, then you need to get out of the way as much as you possibly can so that your character can shine through. So we've talked about audience. We've talked about backstory character, desires, energy, forgetting and focusing. And now the final core element, G is for gamble. If you are going to succeed in voiceover, you must be willing to risk. You must be willing to step outside of your comfort zone to do or to be something that most people would feel uncomfortable doing or being. In other words, you are stepping up to be something that you're not. <laughs> and, and that is a, a very weird place for many people to be. Many times people are nervous just being themselves, let alone portraying something or someone else. 
So uh, it is something that makes us kind of step outside of ourselves. A reluctance to risk is usually the result of an unstem, uh, excuse me, of an unsubstantiated irrational fear, which is often the result of negative self-talk. That idea of beating ourselves up, thinking that we're not good enough, that we're not competent enough, um, that there's no possible way that we can do the job that is at hand and do it in the way that it needs to be done. And if we can get out of that stinking thinking, we've got a much better chance of being able to accomplish our goal. When you quiet your internal negative self-talk, you will find that you will be much more open to rationally evaluating potential risks. In other words, you'll be able to think critically and objectively. You'll be more willing to take those risks once you're able to process them and figure out how to, how to troubleshoot the trouble areas. And then you can move forward without experiencing the fear. So those are the seven core elements of voice acting. And I hope that these are things that you will take and internalize and that you'll be able to process them and that they will help you in be able to delivering your vocal performances. I also hope that they will be able to help you with the study questions that we have for this chapter. Make sure you uh, complete the pre-class questionnaire before we get together to talk about this chapter. Bring questions, bring comments, bring uh, scenarios and examples of uh, things that you've experienced that relate to these seven core elements. And let's talk about them when we get together for class. And as always, make sure you're continuing to watch your Cougar Mail and Blackboard for any changes that may happen um, so that you're informed and that you're up to date.